Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Job 11 through 13 and Acts 9, 1 through 21. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice, so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you, and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Zophar, Job 11. Then Zophar, the Namathite, replied, Are all these words to go unanswered? Is this talker to be vindicated? Will your idle talk reduce others to silence? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, My beliefs are flawless and I am pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God has even forgotten some of your sin. Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you do? Their measure is longer than the earth is wide and wider than the sea. If he comes along and confines you in prison and convenes a court, who can oppose him? Surely he recognizes deceivers, and when he sees evil, does he not take note? But the witness can no more become wise than a wild donkey's coat can become born human. Yet, if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then free of fault, you will lift up your face. You will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as water has gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday, and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor. But the eyes of the wicked will fail, and escape will elude them. Their hope will become a dying gasp. Job Job 12 then Job replied, Doubtless you are the only people who matter, and wisdom will die with you. But I have a mind as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know all these things? I have become a laughing stock to my friends, though I called on God, and he answered, a mere laughing stock, though righteous and blameless. Those who are at ease having contempt for misfortune, as the fate of those whose feet are slipping. The tents of marauders are undisturbed, and those who provoke God are secure, those God has in his hand. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, 
or let the fish in the sea inform you? Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature, and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the tongue tastes food? Is not wisdom found among the aged, and does not long life bring understanding? To God be the wisdom and power, counsel and understanding are his. What he tears down cannot be rebuilt, and those he imprisons cannot be released. If he holds back the waters, there is drought. If he lets them loose, they devastate the land. If he belongs to him belongs the strength and insight. Both deceived and deceiver are his. He leads rulers away, stripped and makes fools of judges. He takes off the shackles and puts uh, put on by kings and ties a, a loincloth around their waists. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows officials long established. He silences the lips of trusted advisers and takes away the discernment of elders. He pours contempt on nobles and disarms the mighty. He reveals the deep things of darkness and brings utter darkness into the light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their reason and he makes them wander in a trackless waste. They grope in darkness with no light. He makes them stagger like a drunkard's. Job 13 My eyes have seen all this. My ears have heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I desire it speak, to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent for you, that would be wisdom. Hear now my argument. Listen to the plea of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you show him partiality? And will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if he examined you? Could you deceive him as you might deceive a mortal? He would surely call you uh, to account if you secretly showed partiality. Would not his splendor terrify you, and would not the dread of him fall on you? Your maximus are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slays me, yet I will hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance. For no godless person would dare come before him. Listen carefully to what I say. Let my words ring in your ears. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. Only grant me these two things, God, and then... I will not hide from you. 
withdraw your hand from me, and stop fighting me with your terrors. Then summon me, and I will answer, or let me speak, and you reply to me. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offenses and my sins. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Will you torment a wind-blown leaf? Will you chase after dry chaff? For you uh, write down bitter things against me and make me reap the sins of my mouth, of my youth. Your, you fasten my feet in shackles, and you keep close watch on all my paths, but putting marks on the soles of my feet. So man wastes away like something rotten, like a garment eaten by moths. That was Job 11 through 13, and now we will turn to Acts 9, 1. Acts 9, 1 will be Saul's conversion. Acts 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters uh, to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners in Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sounds, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananus. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananus, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananus come and place the, his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananus answered, I have heard many reports of about the man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananus, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananus went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. 
Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Okay, that was Acts 9, 1 through 21, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Tomorrow, um, we will be covering Job 14 through 16 and Acts 9, 22 through 43. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So, I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Well, friends, thank you for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So, come back and see us tomorrow, because we will be here. And we hope that you are too.